Working in a collaborative environment is the desired goal in any 3D animation studio. Before the add-on presentation, let's check the network security basics. Every computer has an IP number. We authorize permissions for IP in a local or external network to read or write data, to exchange files or information. We need secure connections because sensible data is on the line. Threats to steal data for illegal purposes are real. Our machines can be zombified or corrupted if we don't protect our IPs for public networks. I would like to show you how to set a collaborative environment for your network connection protocols using reliable hardware and software security measures. We will cipher our connections through a VPN and SD1 website called Sirotier.com. It is free to create an account. Give your network a name. They will encrypt your new virtual network with a special number. You can then add users to the network by adding their node IDs. User A needs to download Zerotier client application and install it. It runs on the Windows bar. If you right-click on the icon, the node ID number will appear in the pop-up at the top. Select it to copy it. Email the node ID to the network admin. The admin adds user A to an authorized connection list in the virtual network and sends the special network identification number back to user A. Another right-click on the zero tier icon and user A can join the network using the special number from the admin, which identifies the client and the server special protocols in the zero tier virtual network that you created. User A is visible and active on the network's authorized connection list with its own IP on the server side. Let's connect another user before launch. User B downloads the Zero Tier client application from their website and installs it. In the Windows bar, he can right-click on Zero Tires icons to get his machine node number. He sends the ID node to my network name admin. The admin adds user B ID node to the authorized connections. User B knows my network name special connection number, so he proceeds to right-click the zero tier icon and selects join network with allow managed active. User B is now connected to my network name server. His IP is part of the secure list through the zero tier client. User A just joined back, ready to teamwork. Congratulations, you now understand how virtual connections are secured. And the presentation continues with the multi-user add-on developer. I'm Swan Martinez. I'm a PhD student at Paris 8 University. The multi-user add-on I am developing at Cube Creative could enable multi-send editing. So imagine each user should be able to work under his own scene or his own collection and everyone see everyone else modification happening in real time. The install link is in the documentation, so whenever you click here, you're getting the latest stable release. Save it into a file folder. Now go to crtr.com and click on download. Select your operating system and then click on save. And now that you have these two files, let's proceed with the first install, the CeroTier client application. So when you click install, it's going to check for your hard disk space. And then you are going to go through next and finish. After that, a new icon will appear here in the Windows bar. You can right click on it and then click to select your node ID. Automatically after clicking it, it's going to be copied to the clipboard. Now you can send that to the network administrator saying that you want to add your node. The admin replies back with an email and also with the authorization for his IP as well as the network name Cypher IP, which is the 12th special number for the virtual network. User A receives the number, the special number, right clicks on the zero tier icon client and then he is going to paste to join a network and click allow managed. After that, 
Windows is going to notify you that a new network has been detected and that you should allow permissions to use it. Now let's go to Blender for the second part. This is a multi-user.zip, open Blender, go to File, Preferences, and then click on Add-ons, and after that, click Install. Search for the zip file that you downloaded for the multi-user, and click on Install Add-on. I already have it installed it here, but you need to activate it here in this checkbox. Once you do that, you need to identify your machine name, in my case it's Schiller, and the color which I will be picking to work inside the, the real Blender uh, 3D space. As you can see, here we see two different users, red and green. And everything else is pretty much self-explanatory, even auto-update button right there. So that's it, that's everything you need to configure. Now press N, come to the sidebar, you will see multi-user tab. From here, if you're a client, you need to click to join. And the zero tier com admin page is going to give you the real IP number that you need to put here in order for you to join the server. This is the Cypher connection that was created the first time when the user administration created the host network. So that way, between both clients, there, are, there is a Cypher connection. After that is approved, the network is then activated and then you get regular assigned IPs. This is the number that Blender needs to join every other connection in the virtual network and the other computers using Blender. That way, user A and user B can input the same server IP public number, and that's how they get validated connections from different parts of the planet to join the Blender session with the multi-user add-on. So let's join the server. I'm going to type the public IP for the multi-user add-on server, and then I'm going to click connect. And you can read here, it says authentication, and then it says online. After that, I am participating in a live session along with other 3D colleagues working in the same environment at the same time. So I'm going to shift A, grease pencil, monkey, and as you can see, an object has appeared. You can also activate Discord or any other communication channel so that you can speak with the other parties as well. This is very useful to coordinate changes in real time for a fully collaborative environment. And these are all of the things that the add-on can do at this moment. There are other implementations which are being worked on, but currently there are a lot of functions already supported. Now, as you can see, this cone is being uh, rotated by the administrator of this hosting session. And right here, I'm going to doodle with another grease pencil object, and you can see that I can even switch to the other user camera if I click on this icon. The red camera icon activates and I can see through the camera of the other user. This is very useful as well. So you can also communicate with the rest of the teams to create different things. Swan, could you tell us a little bit more about how the development of the add-on is advancing through the Discord community, please? It's public, it's, uh, it's on the, the multi-user Discord, so everyone can join between 17 and 18 p.m. each uh, Tuesday and Friday. Our goal is to explore uh, the possibility of collaboration together with the Blender community. This was a really simple example to demonstrate the common workflow, but you can join the Discord community sessions for more interaction. That concludes the client side of things. Now let's see if you want to be an administrator. What can you do? So first of all, please sign up on zerotier.com. Uh, register your name, your email, and then confirm your email. Once you hit register, an email verification is going to be sent. You can click on that to confirm that you are active. After that, you need to click on create network. It's going to assign you an ID name and also a random name as well as your network uh, 12 digit, 12 um, special characters identification. Now, all of this that I have told you about, you can read in the user's guide to install the add-on as well. Now, back in Zero Tier, you can see the network ID name and you can also change the name right here so that your network will be renamed as you need to. So in my case, I'm going to put the description and also the name as you can see right here. Now, if you scroll down, you're going to find a DNS 
uh, section and that's the server address Blender needs in order for other users to find your server and connect to your session, okay? This is important. And down here where it says manually add a member, this is where you're going to input everyone else's ID nodes, okay? This is very important. Right now, no devices have joined this network. Even if you click submit, um, it won't happen anything because you need to download the client yourself. Your machine needs to be identified inside the virtual network that you have just created. So you yourself have to download the Zero Tier client, install it, and run it. And once you run it, the first thing you're going to do is right click on the uh, icon and then select the node ID because the first machine you want to add is your own very own machine. Now, if you click on networks, you will see that you have no active connection. So the network ID you need to join or to connect is this one right here. So you're going to copy that and send it to the other participants and including your machine as well. So you can add a network, then click join, and then your machine is going to be registered as a valid user inside your own network. From there, copy your node ID because now you want to add your machine. So I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to submit it. And if you did everything else correctly, as the manual as well is going to show you step by step, then you will see one device has joined this network. This is exactly what we wanted. And if you continue to scroll down, you're going to see that um, there is uh, an empty name right here. And also you're going to get the status over to this right side of the screen. But if you did everything correct, or if you right click and then check on your connection, everything should be up and running with no problem. Therefore, this is the screen that you expect to see. Someone has registered, in this case, your own machine as an administrator, your online, and then your physical IP. This is the address Blender is going to need whenever someone wants to join your hosted session. This is the IP number that you're going to give them so that they can connect. You can also email every new user that you add here, email instructions on how to connect and how to use the IP numbers. And that's basically it. After that, you only need to read the startup guide to know what kind of things you can do with the multi-user add-on in Blender, which is simply fantastic. All right, so let's fire up Blender as a host this time, not as a client, and let's check how are we doing. I'm going to right click here to get the status. I can see that now I have two networks joined, the one from the multi-user and my own very own network. So don't forget, you can join networks right here. All you need is the 12 uh, special code that they give you from client to client to connect to the server. So if you click that, you can also copy your ID node as well. Anyways, let's go to the tab. Click on host if you're going to host. Okay, this is important. And you have nothing else to configure except just clicking host. And right now you are going to see up here that your session is online, it is active. But down here it says offline. You only need to uh, move the viewport and then it will refresh, okay? Because this is a latency thing. So therefore, uh, whenever you're active, you're going to see it refreshing. Please do not forget to subscribe. I, this video took a lot of time to put together and I'm really happy if you got some help out of it and if it helped you to set up your own network. Thank you very much. My name is Pierre Schiller. I am a Blender Foundation certified trainer. And please try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible.